Hey y'all, it's me, Lynn Daniel, coming today on my Buddy Zone channel, and I am going to make a planning lesson video. So, yeah, thank you for joining me. Be sure to thumbs up this video if you find it helpful. Be sure to like, or you know, that's thumbs up. Subscribe and hit the notification button. I got the uh, Purple Trail Planner. This is my teacher bag. Oh, I can show you all what I bought at Hobby Lobby yesterday. I thought to take you all with me, but it was after the fact. So here's the planner that I got from Purple Trail. I really like this planner because prior to getting that planner, I bought this planner and it was like seven bucks and I got it on Amazon, but I don't like the layout because the layout is so like not conducive to how our schedule works out or how our um, day flows. Okay, so let me show you what I mean. Okay, so it says across the top the days of the week, and then periods down the side. I think there are seven. Yeah, there are enough for seven. Now, in the past, when I taught in a middle school, this might have worked. And I've used some like this before in the one I had last year. Work, you know, I used it for my sloppy copy planning. But this year, uh-uh, it's not, it's just not working. So... I'm using this one as um, a drop all. I think like right now it's just I'm keeping like the copies of the documents that I'm using in class. So like the articles that the students are reading or in the upcoming week. And then this, these are uh, supplementals for teaching. Um, Engage New York text, even though I'm just doing the writing component, I still wanted some of that writing to align with the topic of discussion in reading class with the novel. So here is my, for those of you who didn't see it the first time, here is my new planner from Purple Trail, and I really like this planner. And then if you all um, remember that I told you my team, 7th and 8th grade, we are doing that, that rolling schedule. And so I put it in my phones. That way every day I get a notification of what day of the week we are on, which course we'll meet. And then I print it out so I could have it, a hard copy, so I could share that um, in my classroom on the easel. And then so students can have... Um, you know, advance notice of what days and stuff like that. And then these are just different documents in here. Um, these are documents, tasks, easy tasks, the articles, the PowerPoint that I used for narrative writing. Okay, so this was uh, last week's assignments. And I have three classes a day, and so some of some of the skill work is the same, but for a different article because the standards are the same, but just at um, different grade levels with a little more rigor for the eighth grade. So this is what I have for the first week, and then that Monday is in that in my first planner that I showed you. I need to transfer that over just for consistency. And so this is um, this week's, this upcoming week's uh, week. I've already plugged in my um, due dates and what days the course are meeting. I have my essential question for the week already written out that will go on the board. And then I am going to plug in. I've got my well-managed classroom theme for the week lesson for the week plugged in 
And so I'm going to plug in everything else. So now why the reason why I hadn't I didn't do it on Friday is because I was waiting for these two books to come in. I purchased these from Amazon with my own money as supplementals for the Engage New York novels because since I'm teaching the writing um and I was able to do like gauge the students readiness just a quick measurement you know um I felt like I needed to find um a different lesson or a different way to ask them questions for them to write about so yeah all right so here is monday from last week it's all mapped out and tuesday so i've got to transfer that back and then i started but i'm okay so in the Engage New York, this is the chapter one, um, getting the gist document. It helps you to kind of uh, work at establishing your structures and your protocols for like collaborative working, teamwork and that type of thing, your writing procedures, um, your work time procedures, your reading time procedures and that type of thing. So uh, this document stays near and dear so that I'm able to refer to it. And since seventh and eighth grade are very closely aligned, I only copied, I copied this at home and I'm trying to save ink. So I only copied the seventh grade one. And then I have the eighth grade one on um, an e a digital copy so if anything is different I can notate it right here on this document for instance here are like the learning targets for working in um, working independently and in groups with the standards so you see those there and so the students started this last week and they were able to work, many of them, most of them were able to work independently and get something, some evidence of their understanding of the problems that, from the article that you just saw, that I just kind of skimmed over. Okay, so they, the seventh and eighth graders read their article and then they had to make a poster that showed they they understood the problem that the cultures were presented with and how it impacted their lives. They needed to discuss it with the shoulder partner or with a group of three, no more than three. Then they they uh, marked they read marked and annotated the article, the first two pages, and then we're going to summar they summarized the first two pages, and then we're going to read the last pages page and then put it all together. We're going to do that this week. So um, their exercise was to help them to determine the gist of that article that they read. And here it says chapter four, chapter one of A Long Walk to Water, but they did it with their article. And because their reading teacher is reading the book, the novel with them, and I'm reading the supplementals with them to give them a writing um, focus. And then I can determine the meaning of visual representations on a map. So the students made um, visual representations on a poster. They summarized on the poster the main problem and how it impacted the people's cultures. And so they will continue to work on that because, um, you know, it took a little while. It took a little longer than I expected. They didn't have it done in the 90 minutes. Um, and so we need to, what I discovered last week that um, it is so important to review these expectations and protocols every, and not just every class, but at every transition in the class. So when you're transit, like when you're going into silent or independent work, you tell them the expectation of 
what they must have done, what they're going to do and what they must have done to show evidence that they were working and they could understand the targeted issue. And then when you transition to partner, shoulder partner work, you have to go over it again and, and reread it, reiterate it. And then when you go into the activity of making the poster, you have to reiterate it because if you don't, which last week I didn't in one of my classes and I didn't like what I saw. So even though they were working, they were, many of them were like having too many outside conversations and all. So this is the document that I'm, that I have on my desk and I will refer to this for those transition times and to reinforce the expectations um, on the tasks. And then the reason I purchased these, like I said, is to kind of differentiate the writing. Um, and so as you can see, this one right here is A Long Walk to Water. It's a novel about South Sudan and the cultures that are at war with each other and how war impacts that part of the world and how it um, how it really devastates the the country through war, through water shortage, through lack of um, foliage and plants. The animals are dying. Everything, every everything is being impacted. So. This will allow me to differentiate the writing or at least provide extra topics. And then I can differentiate each topic based on um, what I think certain individuals may need. I also like that it comes with, it comes with comprehension questions. It comes with extended discussion questions. And then it comes with some you know, these extended discussion questions can be made, turned into um, enrichment opportunities, research opportunities, and all of that using the technology. And once we present our technology lesson, technology citizenship lesson to the students and retrieve all of their parental permission slips, then they will be able to use the Chromebooks in my room. And this one is for the eighth grade, Inside Out and Back Again. And it does pretty much the same thing. So this way, I feel like I am not um, reteaching or overlapping what the reading teacher is doing, even though we are using the same novels, but I can reinforce what she is doing. And then these are the words, the vocabulary words this week for seventh grade and they are already on my um, language arts in English language arts board I put them up Friday I had some students to put up those boards Friday and so the words are here I cut this off of the page that they're going to work on this week because it has the definitions and I want the students to um, provide the definitions and a sentence with the word in context Another thing that I did to um, try to look at, because the students are doing a narrative writing piece, that's the very first assignment they were given, and it is due Friday. They had a week or two weeks to work on it, and they had um, several hours of in-class time and then homework time to work on it. And so I was looking for a supplemental to um, show life for visuals and that's this is where I got the slide presentation because I didn't feel like I wanted to reinvent the wheel and make my own because I already make a lot of PowerPoints already I have a lot of PowerPoints and I just didn't feel like making a new one so since I am a member of the better lesson community I went there and I was able to find a lesson that shows um, the qualities of narrative writing and so last on Friday this was the focus for the three classes that met on Friday and then um, we did that for like 30 minutes well we did the presentation for about 10 to 20 minutes I think it really did go into 30 minutes because when I noticed that students were kind of slow to respond then I modified 
my presentation a bit and had them to use the whiteboards to collaborate with their shoulder partners and come up with answers and write them on the whiteboard. And so that did take a little longer, but it was also giving me um, real solid evidence of which students understood, like we talked about strong verbs, we talked about descriptive words, and I had them to list because these are qualities of narrative writing. And then we went through the slide show. And so this lesson I found to be very helpful for Friday's presentation on narrative writing. And again, all of these things, because I do teach like a 90 minute block, I try to divide it into thirds. So I'll have a third on the narrative writing, which is a two week project that is due this coming Friday. Then we do a third on discussion and an article or something related to the classroom novel, which is these things and this thing here. And then I extend that out into some sort of like exit ticket, whether that exit ticket or some sort of performance um, piece. So that performance piece um, from last week is a poster that they are still working on. They did not get finished. And so um, that will be due at the end of this week as well, because that, ha that will have given them three days, some classes, four days to get that done. All right, so now I can go into writing all of these things on here for the week, and that's what I will do. So I will make another video to show you um, what I wrote. It's gonna be very, like a very basic outline because my um, standards, my, my, my standards, when I'm teaching them, my common formative assessment, and all of that information has been submitted to my administrators already. Um, and those are on Google Docs and Google Forms or what, not Google Forms, but that other thing. So they already have those. Um, and this is just for me to work with. This is what I have on my desk wide open and it's a working document. All right, you all, I just thought maybe you wanted to see. I'm loving, I'm loving my lesson plan book. Look at all the cool stickers that come with it. And I got a 15% um, a off coupon. And so I, if I can find it, I will provide a link below where you can get a 10%. I think I still have one that they provided me. But if not, then when you go on Purple Trail, and look, this is not a sponsored video. I don't get any kickbacks or I don't get anything. Um, but we are teachers and we help each other. And so I am really liking this. You get to personalize it to your liking. Um, and so, yeah. All right, y'all, thank you so much for watching. If you're still with me, I want you to leave me a comment and tell me what you like about this planner. Okay, all right, be blessed, bye.